theyeshiva.net. Ten lines from the bottom. Sochem Dav Ches The Gemara has been focused uh, in the last section on the expression of the Mishnah. Kol Makoy Mushain Machnisin Boy Chametz Ein Sarich Bdika. Every place where one does not bring in Chametz does not need Bdika's Chametz. Why the Mishnah used the word Kol Makoy and not Makoy? And for this, the Gemara explained that there are various places which we would have excluded from this halach and we would have said they do need Bidikas Chametz. For example, the holes in the walls of our home where you could put Chametz in and they're in rooms where you do bring in Chametz such as the holes are higher or lower. In similar situations, wine cellars, wine cellars and oil cellars where you may think that you... Uh, do need bdikas chametz, stables, barns of cattle, or chicken coops, or storage places of straw, or different items in the house that have roofs, and you could they have uh, they have tops, a gag, a top, and you could put chametz in there, and you may be using the furniture for chametz and the room for chametz, but nonetheless, because these particular places are either a place where you will not bring in chametz individually into this item because it's not comfortable, or you have animals who may eat it, etc. So therefore, the mission says, call makai. In other words, we expand the makai as, as much as you have to. The point is, if it's a place where chametz doesn't belong and you don't bring chametz there, we rely on that and we say you don't need because chametz. Now the Gemara continues the next tickle, Amir Bchizda. The Prisda said, thank you. Bay Dogim. Bay Dogim is you have a storage place of, uh, uh, I guess, uh, Bay Dogim is a place where you keep fish. And uh, that's where you get your fish for the meal. Ain't so you don't need bdikas chametz there. Frag the Gemara vahatanya the Brayse says trichim bdika you do need bdika so Reb Chizda would be contradicting the Brayse of the Tanoim. So the Gemara like Kash it's really not a contradiction. Ha be Rav Ravi ha be Zutri. When Reb Chizda said that you don't need bdikas chametz in a bay dog and he was talking about Rav Ravi. Rav Ravi means a big one, a large one. It's basically a place where you have, a storage place where you have large fish. So therefore, the shamish, the person who's preparing the meal, can estimate before the meal the quantity of fish that is required for the meal and take it out before the meal. And therefore, it usually will not happen that in the middle of the meal he says there's not enough fish and he's going to go get more. Like we said before by the oil. Habazutri, the Bryce is talking about place where there's small fish. As Rashi says, Habiravrivi ain't sarhbdika. The second of the wide lines. Shayeshlam kavava oimid vain sarhlam lavi bem sasuda. Because you can estimate. Oimid means you can estimate, kva means there's a fixed number. You know how much you're going to need, and usually he won't have to get up in the middle of the meal to bring more. Zutri means small fish. Ainlam kvava oimid. There's no clear estimation of how much you're going to need. Herring. Yeah? Herring. Like herring would be an example. Our herring, yeah. Our herring would be an example. We need more herring. But Sarek Lama de Lavi, so middle of the meal, you may stand up and bring more. You're giving big, big pieces of fish. You know how much you're bringing. You're not going to need more. But if it's small fish, right? Maybe if another few people or somebody's a little more hungry, you need more fish. So the shamash in the middle of the meal is going to want to get more. And he may walk into the storage place of the fish with his bread and leave his bread there. And therefore, that's why the Brisa says you would need Dikas Chametz. So in other words, they weren't really arguing. They were just describing the situations that were coming to them. People were asking questions. They have to do Dikas Chametz here, Dikas Chametz here. And they were describing the halacha based on the reality that was being presented to them. And therefore, you don't, can't make contradictions because here it says here, it says there. Because you just have to know the circumstances. Amir Abba Rav the son of Rav Bay milchi u bay kirei. 
a storage place for salt and a storage place for wax that's used for candles. It needs bdika. Why? Here we can understand. Rashi says, Be milchi is be samelach, be kiri is shaiva, place where you keep wax. Tzarech bdika, lefi shaim, the betech asuda, lavi melech veneris. This is very common in the middle of the meal that the waiter gets up to bring more candles because the candles went out, so he needs more wax, or we need salt. And therefore, in the middle of the meal, he may leave bread there by mistake inadvertently, so you have to do bdikas chum. Amr of Papa, of Papa said, Beit Sivi. A storage place for wood, for lumber. Tzivi is lumber. Ubei tamri, and a storage place for tamarim, which are um, dates. Tzarech b'dikah, again, needs b'dikah, because here again, you will enter in the middle of the meal, and the reason is, you need more lumber, maybe for the fire, or you need more dates for the meal. Again, it's not something that, it's like desserts, you know, a person wants more dessert, there's not enough dates. It's not like the big fish that uh, it's it's basically a course. You know, you come, you come to a mitzvah, you come to a chasna, a Shabbos meal, everyone gets a plate with fish. Yes, it's possible that one person is going to be starving and you're going to want to get another big piece of fish, but it's not common. But if it's dates or it's a small piece of fish, these types of snacks, or it's wine, or beer in Bavel, these types of things, where in the middle of the meal there's often a shortage and it was common for the shamash to go in and get more, like wood or dates or wax or salt. Here you have to do bdikas chametz. But the principle remains always the same. You have to look at a room and say, is it likely that there may be chametz here? Likely doesn't mean I'm 90% sure there's chametz. I may be 10%, maybe only a 10% chance. But there is a chance that there is chametz. A chance we mean under natural circumstances. There could be chametz anywhere but I don't have to expect it. But if it's a place that is at, ha, that the, the, a person will enter through, will go in, during the year enter into that place with chametz in his hand, and that is a likelihood, it's a possibility, so that's a place that needs bdikas chametz, even though it's, of course, only a suffolk, because you may not find any chametz there. It's not like your kitchen, where you're probably going to find chametz. We had a price. The Braisa teaches us we do not obligate a person doing B'dikas Chametz to take his hand and put it into holes and cracks to do B'dikas Chametz because of danger. That's the Braisa. Now it's very cryptic. My Sakana, what type of Sakana are we talking about? What is the danger? Perhaps you're talking about scorpions. If it's an insect that's not dangerous, I don't care, so there'll be an insect over there. But perhaps we're afraid that in these cracks and holes there were scorpions, and the person could get bitten, chas v'shalom. So therefore the chazal said, relax, don't put in your hand into those places. If that's what it means, then we have a bigger problem. How is he using it for chametz? Why is he putting his hand to put things there if there's scorpions hanging out there? In other words, if it's good enough for him, to store chametz there, or to deposit chametz there, or to hide chametz there, whatever he wants to put there, any items. So why is it not? Suddenly it becomes dangerous the night of B'dikas chametz. The night before B'dikas chametz, and a whole year, it's a good place to use. But suddenly the night of B'dikas chametz, there are scorpions, what they knew to arrive from B'dikas chametz. How did you use it? Initially, how did you use it? So you're going to say, you didn't use it. Because there's no scorpions there. Well, if you didn't use it, then it's a makam. Shein machnisim bechametz. You don't need b'dikas chametz. So don't tell me you don't need b'dikas chametz. But pnei sakana, you don't have to do b'dikas chametz there because there's no chametz there because you don't use it. If you don't use it, so there's no chametz there because you don't put anything there. Answers the Gemara Leitzrich. I'll explain to you what the brayser means. The brayser means the nafa. Basically, the structure, say the wall, fell. It crumbled. In other words, initially. The wall was there, and there was a hole or a crack, and you used to use it, and there was no fear of scorpions, because they usually don't hang around in a place that is populated and civilized, and therefore you put chametz there. The problem is this wall crumbled, so it became basically a heap of rubble. And now it attracts scorpions or snakes or other insects, that's where they hang out, you know, rats, mice, etc. These are their, these are the fun places to hang out. These are their sandboxes. 
So now I'm afraid because it's a place of rubble and dirt and, and gravel. So it attracted scorpions. And there is chametz there. Or there may be chametz there. So I tell you, you don't have to do bedikah there. Why? Mepnei ha sakana. So what do you do? You just look. If there's chametz on the top, of course, take it away. Do bedikah. But to stick your hands into every crack and hole in the rubble, there's no need for it. Mepnei ha sakana. Either Chazal wanted bedikah's chametz, but the same Chazal said... In this case, we're going to rely on bittel because we do not want to endanger a person. Says the Gemara, one second. This doesn't make sense. Enofal, if we're talking about a case where the house fell or the wall fell or whatever crumbled, then lamali bdika. Then it's not an issue of a scorpion. Then you don't need bdika. Why? Now we have a Mishnah in Psach, and we're going to learn it later. If you have Chametz, even if you know that there's Chametz there, on a Mapoilus, how does he say a Mapoilus? A, a heap of stones? Huh? A, a ruin collapsed. A ruin collapsed and covers the Chametz. So now I'm doing Bdikas Chametz the night of Pesach, and in my basement, right, a wall collapsed and covers the Chametz. Harei hu kimavur. Halachically, you can treat this chametz as though it was already destroyed, as though it was burnt, as though it was eliminated. You do not have to go and take shovels and dig up the rubble and find the chametz, even if you know that there's chametz, in order to do beer chametz. I thought the difference was that the case where, the, where, the, where we have a yeah. fallen, it was accessible. This, this, I think we learned this day before, that it's a concept of where it's collapsed and it's inaccessible, then it's, uh, then it's as if it's nullified. But in the, in the case where the wall collapses, oh. reach in there, isn't it different? Okay, <laughs> good. That's what the Gemara wants to analyze. And if you're telling me that it was a nafal, the word mapoilus is actually associated with the word, right? Mapal, nafal, it fell, and uh, it collapsed, yeah. And that's what you're telling me, and that's why you don't have to be the chametz, because there may be scorpions. I'm asking you, forget the scorpions. Whenever there's chametz that is under a mapoilus, under a pile of rubble, debris, gravel, earth, filth, the Chachamim said you do not have to do bdika. you could treat it as though there's beer. It's true, the Chachamim said you have to do bittel, you should do bittel still, right? And the reason you should do bittel is, as we're going to see later, is because if in the middle of Pesach, for whatever reason, some of the Chachamim gets exposed, right? Somebody comes and cleans up a little bit of the rubble, or something happens, or or an animal comes around and exposes a little bit of the chametz and it's in your domain, you're going to be over on bal yera, bal yimotze, if you don't destroy it right now. So if you did bitl, you're good. But you don't have to do beer chametz. So forget about scorpions, even if we know there's no scorpions. Answers the Gemara and says, no. Let's take a look at Rashi. The nafal. Im nafal abinyin ein mechaivin oise livdik as gal avonim. We don't obligate him to search through the pile. Gal is a, a mound, a heap, a pile of stones. Ela le maris ha'ayin. Here maris ha'ayin doesn't mean maris ha'ayin as we usually say. It. Maris ha'ayin, only what your eye sees. In other words, the chumas that you see, you have to get rid of. Avaloy hachnis yodoy beinayin. There's no obligation, that's what the price is meant, to put your hand in between the cracks and look and find. Why? Because of scorpions or a similar danger of some dangerous insects that may be roaming around your gravel, your dirt. In the beginning, when the wall was intact, you used it. You used it. It was a hole, and you used it. But Scorpions are attracted to garbage dumps and to, and to heaps of rubble. Ashpa is ashpa garbage, and and galin are, are heaps, mountains of, of rock and rubble and dirt, etc. So therefore, you don't have to do bdika. Ah, it's a mapoilus, answers the Gemara, host, and the Mishnah is talking about Shayna Kelev Yachel Chapis That the door cannot search for the chametz. The Gemara explains over there, the Mishnah explains over there, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel said, when is chametz called mavur? If a mapoilus fell on it, only if this if the dog can't search for it, meaning that the heap is tall at least minimum three tfachim, which would be approximately 
between 9 and 12 inches, so that even a dog will usually not go and search for it because it's enough of a mechitza, enough of a chatzitza for the smell of the chametz to reach the dog and entice the dog to go look for the food. Here, when we say that the Bryce is talking about that the wall fell, it doesn't mean there's a huge heap of rubble and the chametz is buried three tfachim under the rubble. Then you say you don't have to do b'dik and beer. It's like mavur. But here, it's much more accessible, as you said, Rabbi Yaakov. It's not under three tfachim, not nine inches or twelve inches of rubble. There is some rubble, the wall fell, so you would have to do B'dikas Chametz, because it's right here, the dog is going to find it. And that's why there's a much bigger shash that it's going to be exposed, because it's pretty in the open. It may be one tafach under, or two tafachim under, or two and a half tafachim under, maybe a few inches, but not many inches. And therefore you would have to do B'dikah. But if there is any danger of scorpions or similar hazardous insects, the Chachamim said, don't do B'dikah for that reason. That's why the Bryce says that when there's a hole, you don't have to stick your hand into it because of the sakana. Because we're talking about in a case where, number one, you use the hole. We asked if it's a hole and there's a sakana there, why did you use it? The answer is you used it when it was intact. Then the wall fell, so it's not intact. Now the chametz may be in the hole over there, but it's not deep. Three tfachim under the rubble, it's not. So you could do b'dik and beer, it's much more accessible, and the dog is going to reach it. And that's why we do say you have to do beer, right? However, in this case, you don't have to because of the particular hazardous concerns in terms of the scorpions which may bite the person who's doing b'dik and therefore they said we do not obligate you to do b'dik as in this particular situation. So this means that we never have to do b'dik as when the chametz falls under the rubble. Whenever the chametz may be mixed in into a pile of rubble, gravel, filth, dirt, and it's buried under it, you never have to do b'dik. If the rubble is three tfachim tall, and the chametz is under it, or maybe under it, which means between 9 and 12 inches, then you for sure don't have to do beer, because we said, harehu kemavur. We treat it as though it's gone, it was exterminated, it was destroyed. But now we learned that even if the pile of rubble is smaller, Right? It's not three tfachim tall. Nonetheless, you don't have to do b'dikas chametz. Why? Because of a concern that there may be some undesirable insect there, and therefore you do not have to do b'dikas chametz. So that's a gewaldig chiddush that we got from this b'risa, that there's a whole new concept. Besides the issue of mapoilus, there's the issue of sakana. And therefore you don't have to do b'dikas chametz, even if it's a small pile of rubble, as long as there is even a chance that it may be attracting a scorpion or a snake or similar things that are hazardous. Of course, if you know that this, that chance doesn't exist, so then the, this wouldn't apply. So now... It's even the open. I, mean, this, I, I don't know only the whole... I'm sorry, what? This would be even in the open. If something, I mean, no, if it's in the place, open, then we're not worried about a scorpion. Just take it. Be inside. It, <laughs> I mean, no, inside. no, we're talking about sticking your hands into a place where you don't see the scorpion. Right. If there's chametz right here, what's the problem? Just no, take it. No, no, I mean, in, not in the hole, out in the open. There's dirt, and you have to pull away the dirt. And then, I mean, if there's a chash sakana, if it's in the open, it's not a problem. Just take it away when the scorpion is not there. But if I have to stick my hands into holes and cracks, right, so I can't see with there. So, the, so you would say, okay, bring in a tractor, <laughs> bring, in, bring in a cleaning group, let them take shovels, clear it all up, and the scorpions will go away. Or at least you'll see them. We don't say that. We don't say that. Just take a look in Taisvis. It's an interesting Taisvis. The last Taisvis, Chesamaral. Hachik Shakelev Yachel Chapis Acharav. We're talking about that the dog can search for it because it's not so deep and therefore the smell, the aroma is very appealing to the dog. And that's why the source of the exemption is danger, nothing else. If so, Toysvus has a question. The Mishnah said that Chamet Shenof Lalov Mapoilus is Kemavur. And Reb Shem and Gamliel explained when, if it's three Tfachim. But based on this Braisa, the Mishnah should have not left us in the dark and should have said, actually not. Even if it's less than three Tfachim, you don't have to do beer Chamet for a different reason. Because of Sakana. You're telling me the reason is because it's three Tfachim, and therefore nobody's going to bother to find it. The whole reason of B'dikas Chametz is why? 
You may come to eat it. You're not going to come to eat it. Right. It is something you have absolutely no access to it. To we still do bittel just in case, in case, in case it gets exposed. And Pesach, fine, we're not worried. But here, where it's less than three tfachim, we're saying you still don't have to do bdika and beer. Why? Because sakana. So the Mishnah shouldn't have made a blanket statement that if it's three tfachim, you don't have to do bdika schametz. It's something very strange. It's a very confusing Allah in the Mishnah. And you're telling me that the Bryce is introducing all new Allah. That's the question of Taisvas. From the Mishnah, it seems like that if the mapoilus, if the heap would be less than three tfachim, it wouldn't be mavur and you would have to do bdikas chametz. Oimeri says the ri, shiny hasam is different. Very interesting. The vadai ike chametz. Over there, the Mishnah is talking about you know that there's chametz. You know for sure that you had a whole, a whole basket of bread here. You know for sure. So therefore, hitrichua, the vadai ike chametz, it's for sure chametz. So therefore, you could say, Meaning, the Mishnah is talking about in a place where you know for sure that there's chametz. So therefore, they're going to tell you that if there's no three tfachim, you should hire help, clean up the heap, and get rid of the chametz. Because you know for sure that there's chametz, and it's very shallow, it's not deep. I, there's a sakana, okay, so clean it up so you could see, and then you could take the chametz away, and you're not going to get bitten. Don't put your hand in a hole. But uh, we're talking about here, you're not sure that there's chametz. Remember, it's talking about a hole. And we said you don't have to put your hand into the hole. You're not sure that there was chametz there. It may have been used for chametz throughout the year. And then the wall fell. Since you're not even sure that there's chametz over there, so the chachamim, did not make you do this. In other words, in a regular situation, even if you're not sure that there's chametz, that's what B'dikas chametz is. The Chachamim obligated you to go search for chametz in every place where there's a possibility for chametz. In a place of danger, they're not mechayevi, that you should rent workers and clean it out. In this case, they were lenient and they relied on bittel. That's the distinction he makes. So this is talking about in a case where you don't know that there was chametz and then you don't have to do it. If you know for sure that there's chametz, get rid of it. Unless it's three tfachim high, and then you don't have to. You can just do it. Okay, so as a result, the conclusion is that the Brisa told us if there's a hole, you don't have to put your hole, your hand into holes and cracks to do b'dikas chametz because of danger, and we explained what we're talking about. We're not talking about a regular wall, which is intact, because then if there's a real danger, you wouldn't have put in chametz then. If you did put in chametz there, so then why can you do b'dikas chametz? And if you didn't put in chametz there, because it's always dangerous, then you don't have to do dikas chametz at all. But what did we establish here? A principle. And that is, a Jew is going to do dikas chametz, and his hand or body may be bitten. And therefore we say, no dikas chametz for you. The main thing is to keep you safe. Frek the Gemara, a general principle. of Amar Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe Lazar taught us, Shluchei mitzvah einan ezoik. Some <laughs> interesting question. Not a joke. Somebody is going to observe a mitzvah. He should not be afraid of being harmed. He's going to do b'dikas chametz. He should say, "I'm not worried for scorpions." The scorpions know it's b'dikas chametz. They stay away. <laughs> what is that? The Gemara in the Fulham or the fellows? Doing? Yeah, yeah, the famous story. Shluchei mitzvah in Nizaykin. Amar Rabashi. Now, this is quite a fascinating answer. Rabashi answers and says, you're right. Shema toivad loy machat. I'm afraid that this person, before B'dikas Chametz, is going to lose a needle. He lost a needle. A needle is not easy to find, right? We have the expression, go find a needle in a, in a haystack. If it's a big thing, I'm not worried. He may have lost a needle. V'asi le'yunabasve. And where did he lose his needle? From all places. Didn't lose his needle uh, somewhere in the bedroom. He lost his needle by this heap of rubble. This heap of rubble where the chametz is, might be buried, this is where he lost his needle. No. Once you're doing b'dikas chametz, let's kill two birds with one stone. But already schlepping down and looking and searching for chametz. V'asi le'yunabasra. As I'm doing b'dikas chametz, I go to be my eye and I go to search for the needle. Because I want the needle. So therefore, I'm doing b'dikas chametz, not only for the chametz, 
but also bdikas <laughs> machat. One second, I'm searching for the needle. So therefore, Rabashi says this is not called shluchi mitzvah. You're right. If it was only bdikas chametz, the Bryson would have not told us be afraid of scorpions and don't do bdikas chametz. But I'm afraid in some situations there may be a needle he's also searching for. Or something similar that's small and hard to find. And therefore, it's not shliach mitzvah anymore. And therefore, the Chazal say, nobody should do it. Even if you don't have a needle, just stay away from this. Because we're afraid of that one Jew who may have a needle. Frek de Gemara, you're making a face. So this takes away the whole thing of giving a guy a dollar when he goes to give him uh, a mitzvah. Doc, a girl, so he's going on a trip. Good question. Good question. Saying people go on a trip. They're going on vacation. And you give them a dollar, ten dollars as a shlich mitzvah to give tzedakah. He's not a shlich mitzvah. He's going on vacation. In the process, he's going to put ten dollars in the pushka. Right? It's contradicted by this Gemara. That's the, how do I know it's a good question? Because the Gemara is going to ask it. The Gemara is, going to, the Gemara is not going to talk about vacation in Miami. They, at that point, they didn't yet go to Miami. It's before they discovered, uh, before they discovered Miami. Maybe Athens, maybe Greece, huh? Yeah, everybody always takes shlichus mitzvah. I'm saying that's his question. What's the shlichus mitzvah? It's not unless you're going, especially for tzedakah, but you're not. <laughs> you're going on a business trip. You're going whatever you're going for, which is nice, but it's not. It's not a mitzvah. Freg the Gemara, very good question. Let's see Rashi. Shema toivid loy machat koydem lochen. We're not talking about you lose a needle late. You lose. A, you lost a needle earlier. Already before bdikas chametz. In other words, if you lose in the middle of the bdika or at the end of the bdika, you're doing bdikas chametz for bdikas chametz. But here you lost it earlier. So now you already killed two birds with one stone, and you're going to look for it. And since your intention of bdikas chametz is also for the needle, so we're afraid that he's not a shliach mitzvah and he's going to be harmed. Yeah. Why are we not scared that during? Uh, Why are we not scared if it's during, if he lost the during? Yeah, no, he means if it's at the end of Bdikas Chametz, you had a needle in your pocket and it fell, fine, but your Bdikas Chametz was good. In other words, that the Bdikas Chametz is already, the whole Bdikas Chametz is also part of, of Bdikas, of the Bdikas of the needle. I think that's what he means. You understand what I'm saying? It's a, it's a, it's a dual. You're right. If the needle fell in the middle, beginning of Bdikas Chametz and he says, let me do it for both, it would be the same minion. I don't understand. Let's say I'm searching for a needle. It's not a mitzvah? This is your question. It's not a mitzvah? Why is it not a mitzvah? He wouldn't be, I mean, it would negate. How could exactly. It? Why would it negate the mitzvah of the Kishamets? So you'll say, well, maybe because you have another chesh, but another incentive. So here's a question. I'm giving stalker. People do this all the time. I'm not giving stucker only because I want to feed the poor person. I'm giving stucker because of other reasons. As we're going to see. Does that take away from the stucker? If somebody says, sell a zulitz daka, I'm giving away this sell of its I want my child to live. Or I haba. I want to be a Ben Olam Haba. I want to merit the life of Olam Haba. That's why I'm giving this Salaf Tzedakah. Rashi. The last Rashi on the page. Ukahai Gavna. The Miskaven le Mitzvah Ule Tzarechai. When your objective is the Mitzvah and your own needs. My needle. Lav Shliach Mitzvah Hubitmiya? The Bryson tells me if I'm giving a Salaf Tzedakah because I want Olam Haba. Or for my child Tzchus. Harez et Tzadik Gomor. This is, this person is called a tzaddik gomer, a complete tzaddik. Which is a very strange expression. And he said tzaddik gomer. This is like the ultimate tzaddik, complete wholesome tzaddik. Rashi? Rashi was perturbed by this expression. And he said tzaddik gomer. You become a tzaddik gomer by giving one tzaddik. He says, tzaddik gomer bedover zeh. In this act, he's called a tzaddik gomer. Meaning, you don't say that this act was eh, it's not really righteous because he had other agendas. In this maise, he's a tzaddik gomer, but davar zayi is a tzaddik gomer. V'lo yamnini, you don't say shaloy lishma oisa. Interesting. You don't say this is called a mitzvah not lishma. He's not doing it for the mitzvah. He couldn't care less about the mitzvah. Why? Elakiyim mitzvahs boyre shetzivol lasus Beautiful rash. 
This Jew was observing the mitzvah of his creator who told him to give tzedakah. He's also having kavana for personal benefit. Through the tzedakah he wants to marry the next world. Or his children should live, his children should be healthy. The mitzvah that he did, Rashi says, is called lishma. As he said in the previous Rashi, we don't say that it's la, it's laf shliach mitzvah. We don't say he's not called a shliach mitzvah because he has other intentions. We don't say it's called shaloy lishma. We don't say that. Even though he's saying it, I'm not doing it because God told me to give tzedakah to feed this person. I'm doing it for my own benefit. It's still not called, still not called shaloy lishma. In other words, Rashi is saying the fact that you have a machshava of personal benefit doesn't take away the fact that there's also an element lishma. Why? Because Rashi says if he's a Jew, he's being mekayim the mitzvah of his creator shetzevol asas token. There's an additional machshava, but it's an additional layer. It doesn't take away the truth that deep inside he wants to do God's will. And that doesn't take away. Elamai, fakat. I want also, I want to gain from it. In other words, my, my nefesh of Bahamas is also happy. Nu is vas, if you want to use that terminology. My animal soul is also happy. My divine soul is happy because it's doing a mitzvah. My animal soul is also happy. Well, <laughs> it's always lishma. It's always lishma. Anyway. Saying about tzedakah, maybe. No. Good question. Good question. Good question. If you learn, if you're learning because it's geshmak, yeah. you because it's, right, yeah. So it's always he's learning because it's geshmak, because he likes it. It's geshmak. It's good geshmak. It's good intellect. Yeah. That's called geshmak. Okay, it's a good hara. Good hara. I raise a tzaddik gomor. It's interesting words. A tzaddik gomor. In other words, don't say that this mitzvah is a half baked. No, it's a complete mitzvah. It's a mitzvah. Rashi says it's a mitzvah lishma. Lo yamrin and shaloy lishma. We don't say it's shaloy lishma. Even though he's saying, this is my thought, I'm doing it because I want schar. I push and want reward. <coughs> huh? So No, he's doing it for schar. He's doing it for schar. In other words, there's an additional layer. You want to do what Hashem wants. Additionally, yeah, you're saying, you know what? I also would like my children to... Uh, to be blessed. That's just different from the case that your son brought up on Shabbos, that there's within the Lishma. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good question. One minute, one minute. So, so, in other words, he wants to do what Hashem wants, plus he wants another thing also. And not only that, it seems from Rashi, even this machshava itself is a good machshava. In many ways, you could say it's even a positive thing that this Jew believes the power of a mitzvah. <laughs> he believes in the power of a mitzvah. It's not like this machshava is nah, but it's an additional layer. Mitzvah's the machshava itself. Huh? Have a power. However, you want to find it. It's, it's a divine act. It's 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 Hashem. So you're Yeah. And, and it's a, there's a for yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Olam haba. However, you want to touch it. But he sees the value, the infinite, powerful value of a mitzvah. That's what I meant. Though. Maybe tzedak is different because the mitzvah he's benefiting the whoever he gave it to. Him. So there's a connection between the... So let's take a look in Toysvis. You're asking a good question. That's true. In Yerushalmi, when it says mitzvah, it means stucker. In Yerushalmi, when it says mitzvah, it means stucker. Take a look in Toysvis. We have a mission in Pirkei Perik Aleph, Mishnah Gimel. Altiyu, Kavadu, Amasham, Shunas, Arav, Shalm, Nas, Lekavu, Pras. Don't be like servants who serve the master in order to get a pras, pras is a prize, the word prize in English comes from the Greek word pras, which in Hebrew also means prusa, like a piece, you know, you get a piece of the pot. Frektoisvist, you see it says in the Mishnah that it's not a good thing. Altiyu kavodim. How can the Braise say, I raise a tzaddik gomor? Is there an argument? It's not an, usually we don't try to make arguments. So the, the Mishnah Prekiyavis is trying to discourage this attitude. And the Braise says tzaddik gomor, which means... It's not just okay, but it's perfect. It's like, go ahead. Do it with the kavana that you want your children to be healthy. Harez it tzadik gomor, Rashi says. Perfect. But the Mishnah in Prikiyava said, no, no, no. It's not, we're not going to say don't do it, but it's not perfect. It's not altiyu kavod. That's the Shiloh of Toysus. So Toysus says, don't compare. Two separate things. Amanas lekabal pras means... That this is like a condition. This is the only reason I want it. 
And if chas v'shalem, the person learns that he's not going to get schar, he's like, this is the stupidest thing I ever did in my life. That's what the Mishnah is talking about. Hainu v'kahai gavna in a case shim loy tova loy oisa toi v'shom If the good that he's waiting for does not come, toya um ischarit ala tztokesh osa. Then he says that Stucker was futile. He regrets it. In other words, there was only one, one agenda. And that is my benefit. That's what the Mishnah is discouraging. It shouldn't be al menas. The condition is like I'm telling you, I'm doing this for you. One reason, because there's a condition. It's a condition. And without that condition, without that, I take it all back. I'm not interested. In other words, there's nothing else besides my benefit. Avo, Misha, Eina, Toyo, Mizcharet. But somebody who wants it. But the Khalil, it's not going to happen. He's not going to regret the whole thing. In other words, he cares for it. That's the point. At least subconsciously or in a deep place, he cares for the mitzvah. Then, Harezat Sadik Gomor. So it's not that he's doing it al menas. In other words, it's all al menas. That's the only condition. And if not, and if not, I'm not interested in doing it. It's the other way around. I want to do the mitzvah of Hashem. Because I know how valuable the mitzvah of Hashem is, I believe how beneficial it is. Fakert. It represents the faith of the person in the koyach of Torah mitzvahs. In the koyach of Atam Advekim Hashem I can't use that same logic. To... So B'dikas Chometz is the same thing. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing B'dikas Chometz because I want to do B'dikas Chometz. I also want to happen to find a needle. No? Why are we delegitimizing this whole B'dikas Chometz and saying he's not a Shliach Mitzvah? If you would tell me that when you have a Machshava for personal benefit, it's not called Lishma, so then maybe Rebbe Lezer said, Shluche Mitzvah ain't in the and only if they do it Lishma. Because then it's like a godly act. So then do you have a special protection. But if it's Shaloi Lishma, meaning I'm doing it but for my benefit, then we say... You don't say Einon Ezoik. But once we established here that it's called Lishma, Harez at Sadiq Gomor, that's why it actually says it's called Lishma. If you would say it's called a mitzvah Shaloi Lishma, then I can explain. In that case, it's not completely divine, so to speak. So therefore, you don't say Einon Ezoik. But so once we establish it's Lishma, so then why can't you put your hand into the crack despite the scorpions because Shluchim it's Einon Ezoik? That's the Shiloh of the Gemara. And, and what is the Plus was saying? That, that it was, it, it has the shame Lishma, but because he attached a condition to it, then it goes <coughs> out from Lishma. Right. And he brings Baba Brasso to say that there's <coughs> levels of Tzedakah, and this may be the lowest. Yeah, I have to look it up, but I think so, yeah. I think the Gemara Rosh Hashanah indicates that every single Jew has the Edson. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So then you could just put the Even if you were worry about the There's a lot of advertisements all over. Say, give to this organization, you'll get the full of. <laughs> you wouldn't have given there if not for that. You're only giving for that reason. <laughs> you might not have been trying to give it out, but the fact that we've never given to that organization. Now, again, even if you're doing a mitzvah, mama shaloy lishma, it's still called a mitzvah. Like we say, la oilam yasek adam batero mitzvah shaloy lishma, even really shaloy lishma. A person is learning Torah because he wants to be a Talmud Chacham. A person is learning Torah because he wants honor. A person is, the Gemara says, Sheikari Rebbe, wants to be called a Rebbe. A person is learning Torah, you say the intellectual, uh, the intellectual high, etc. It's a write off the tax write off. We say, lishma. It's still a mitzvah. Here we're talking about a type of mitzvah that will protect you from natural damages. This needs a mitzvah that, so to speak, is a little beyond teva. It's a little beyond teva. So you need a mitzvah l'shma. You need a mitzvah l'shma. It should be the kayach of elikus in the mitzvah. That's the chiddush, that it's a mitzvah, this is a mitzvah l'shma. He's doing it for Hashem, even though he has a geshmak because of personal benefits also. It's a famous mashal from the Baal Shem Tev, why we eat on Shabbos. Why is there a mitzvah? Shabbos is a spiritual day, a holy day. Who came up with this idea that on holy days you have to eat more than other days? What's the shaykhs? So he told a famous story that there was a, a prince who was, um, who was sent to a far, far remote village to, to, you know, to get experience of, of real life uh, in the country so he should be able to be worthy of being a king. And after many years, he got so absorbed in the culture there that he lost his touch. And he became a real peasant. 
And the king was very aggravated because he went there for a purpose, but he lost touch. So the king sent him a letter. And in the letter he wrote, you know, how much he misses him and he should know who he is. And you're not a peasant, you're a prince. A very, very warm, heartfelt and heartwarming letter. And the child received it and it triggered all his memories and the dorm relationships. He started to dance. So the peasant said, why are you dancing? So he said, I got a letter from my father. Said, Who's your father? The king. And he starts to scream. Said, what are you talking about? What? what are you? You're fantasized. Go to sleep. And he realized the problem. So he said, you know what? I'm going to take you out for a drink and it's all on me. They said, oh, that's good. And they all go drinking and he pays for the drinks and they're dancing and he's dancing. He's dancing because of his father's letter. And they're dancing because they got free drinks. So he said, Shabbos, Yom Tev, the Neshama, the Neshama, the Neir, Neir Hashem Nidvilam, gets a letter. And it's overwhelmed from ecstasy and it starts dancing. So the body and the eight Sahara, well, what are you what are you doing? He said, Don't worry, we're having an unbelievable meal tonight. You <laughs> filter fish, Machalan, oh great. So everybody's celebrating. The Nefesh Bahamas is celebrating the Kugel, and the Nisham is celebrating its connection. First taste. So it doesn't take away. <laughs> doesn't take away. So yeah, even even my all the parts of me are celebrating it for different for for, for different purposes, and it's still called a mitzvah lishma. You just have to remember what's the Iker and what's not the Iker. And that's the distinction that Taisvis makes. If it's a real Tanai, that without it you undo it. You know, if Shabbos is not about Kugel, there's no Shabbos. Or it's, you know, extra credit, so to speak. This is the question of the Gemara. I'm just going to tell you a Vart. There's a Sefer called Ach Pritvua. It's a Hasidic word from Reb Herschel Alisker. He asks, okay, everybody, what's Harez at Sadiq Gomor? So Rashi says, doesn't mean he's a tzaddik gomer. It means this thing is... is, is uh, I think from the Vilna Gaon it's brought that the original Gemara said tzaddik gimel. So the person interpreted it, harezet tzaddik gomer. Really it had to be harezet tzedakeh gemura. Harezet tzedakeh gemura. That's a type of word from the Vilna Gaon. It's complete tzedakeh. Not harezet tzaddik gomer. Well, you became a tzaddik gomer because you decided to give a cellar for a for, for, for schar. Hareza Tzedaka, the word Tzedek comes from the word Tzedaka, that's true. That's true, Tzedek, justice. Tzedek Hashem. But the Nakuda is Hareza Tzedaka Gemura. Rashi doesn't learn like that. Most of don't, because he says Hareza Tzedek Gemura Dovaza. But I saw a beautiful word from, uh, from the Ach Pritvua. Mamash, a nice word. He says Hareza Tzedek Gemura. Why? When a person gives Tzedaka, usually the person who receives the Tzedaka, it's not so comfortable. It's always more comfortable to be on the giving end than on the receiving end. Basically, you don't have, and I'm giving you the money, and you, you feel like a, a little bit of a schnorrer, and uh, I'm the one who's giving. There's a certain sense of uncomfort, which is why the Gemara in Baba Basu speaks about hamafaisai, somebody who gives staka with, a, uh, with pleasantness. You know, there's people who give a lot of money, but there's a certain arrogance. It's like, let's remember who's the giver and who's the taker, and it's obnoxious sometimes. Because it's not just the money, it's also the attitude, the smile, the derecher, the respect you show for the person. It's not always easy for a person who has money to show that respect, you know, to every guy who comes for them. So Rabbi Heshtaliska says like this. He gives the person money, and the person feels uncomfortable. I'm doing this for myself. You're doing me a favor. That's the point. The point is he does it in a way that the receiver feels that he's doing the giver a favor. You're helping my children. You're helping me in my life. Really, you're giving and I'm taking. You're giving me the opportunity to be able to accomplish that. So, that's a tzaddik gomer. That when he gives the tzaddik, the feeling that he gives to the other person is, I'm doing this mamish for myself and you're helping me do what I want to do. And that's real tzaddik. That's taka real tzaddik. Real tzaddik is to make the person feel the emes. That as much as you're giving, you're also receiving. As Chazal say, more, more than the Oni receives from the Balabayas, the Balabayas receives from the Oni, the schus of the Tzedakah. So that's a very deep feeling. That essentially, you know, there's a cycle that God created. It happens to be that in this situation, I give and you take. In other situations, you t- give and I take. And even in this situation itself, I'm giving, but really I'm taking. You're giving me the opportunity to, to give Tzedakah. I raise it, Tzadigamur. 
That's a that's a tainj. I'll call upon him. We're back to the question. Why is this situation excluded of shluchim mitzvah even is like because of his needle? How could the needle ruin the mitzvah of dikas chametz? And for the Gemara, and for the Gemara, I'll tell you the problem. Dilma, you're right. You're right. If he searches for the needle with Bdikas Chametz, Harez it the Gabor, no problem. It's a Shliach Mitzvah. But Dilma Basar de Badak Asilu Yuna Basra. What I'm afraid is something else. Not the Bdikas Chametz. The Bdikas Chametz is good. After he finishes Bdikas Chametz, so the Mitzvah is over. In other words, you finish Bdikas Chametz, you say there's no more Chametz here. And you're done with Dikas Chametz, it's time to go to sleep. It's midnight, Erev Pesach, we're going to bed. But now you lost a needle. And maybe you lost your needle in the middle of Dikas Chametz. Maybe you lost your needle in the beginning of Dikas Chametz. Maybe you lost your needle at the end of Dikas Chametz. So you say, let me go, continue a search just for the needle. This is not for Chametz anymore. This is for the needle. This is the sakana we were worried about. Not for the B'dikas Chametz, for the B'dikas Machat after B'dikas Chametz was over. That's what Rashi says. Basar de Badak v'gomar es kol ha-mitzvah. Asi le basra. And therefore, we don't say on the shluchei mitzvah einan nizaykin. So if you would search that place first before the rest of the house, then you... If you're doing it with B'dikas Chametz, I don't mind. You're doing a mitzvah of Hashem. And you're saying, I also want to, I want to benefit. And maybe you might even say, let the mitzvah of the Kishchamets help, help me find my needle. <laughs> well, they say that now, I'm a rabbi, now it's a doctor. But now is the question, if I don't find my needle, I'm going to say, oh, I should have never done the Kishchamets. This is a stupid thing. No, I want to do the Kishchamets. I also want to find my needle. And they said, Tzadik Omar. But here the problem is, you may do it after. So therefore, it's a fascinating halacha. Because of this, that you may lose a needle, and you may look for it after B'dikas Chametz. They said that nobody should do B'dikas Chametz. Nobody should do B'dikas Chametz in a pile of rubble. Why? Even if you never lost a needle. You don't even own a needle. Why? Because there may be a Jew who loses a needle. And this Jew is not looking for it with B'dikas Chametz. That wouldn't be right. He's look for it after B'dikas Chametz. And that's why it's going to be a danger because the, the scorpion may bite him. And that's why nobody should do because comments. Because of this Jew who may have lost a needle. It could also be a danger if he does a little searching and then he's not successful in finding the needle that he's also looking for. And then at the end, he regrets. You're right. Okay, that's something else. But we're not, we're not, even, we're not, even, uh, we're not even considering that. I want to conclude with a word from the Kotzke Rebbe. Kotzke Rebbe has a beautiful word on this Gemara. It's not the literal meaning of the Gemara, but it's a beautiful word. It's printed in a sefer called Beis Kotzke Likutim. So he says like this. He says like this. I understand if the Gemara would have say, what's the lotion of the Gemara here? Uh, Shema toived loy machat. Rashi says, maybe he lost a needle. Rashi should have said, Shema Toivad Lo Yaloim. Maybe he lost a diamond. Then I understand, the person lost a diamond. <laughs> yeah, he's going to go crazy, and a whole Bdikas Chametz is thinking about his diamond. And then after Bdikas Chametz, he looks for his diamond. He says, A machat? What, what's, what's, what's a machat worth? It's like you'll tell me, uh, the Gemara will say, You may have lost a penny, you may have lost a nickel. Okay, so you lost a nickel. I understand a person lost. Uh, <laughs> A check of you know twenty five thousand dollars in the rubble, you're gonna go crazy. Shema yatovet lo yaloi, a diamond, not a machat. Psa modne, a modne ingin. Psa needle from all situations. Give me something a little more, a little more expensive, a little more precious. Interesting question, huh? <laughs> you're saying even a needle? Yeah, obviously it means even a needle. We don't mean only a needle. Even a needle. I understand if you lost your credit card and your license and your passport, for sure. But it's interesting, this is the example he gives. And he says, especially, yeah. Dikas Chametz is once a year. You do it once a year. And people, there's a certain energy, you know, Pesach is coming. It's, it's not something that happens constantly. Yeah. There's even a Shailah, why we don't make Shechiyonu on Dikas Chametz. Okay, we rely on the Shechiyonu of Pesach. 
but it's, it's, it's a mitzvah that comes once a year. So the Gemara really thinks that in the middle of B'dikas Chametz that comes once a year, he's thinking about, his, about, about, uh, about the needle. And then he asks another question. The expression of the Gemara is Shluchei Mitzvah Eina Nezoyke. Shluchei Mitzvah. Which means, literally, somebody who's a shliach to do a mitzvah. Really, the point is, somebody who's involved in doing a mitzvah. Right, like here, Ptikas Chametz, I'm not sending a shliach. The word Shluchei Mitzvah, in many ways he says is strange. Why? Because what's a shliach? Shliach is, I send you to be my shliach, to go somewhere, and say, be Mekadosh Anisha or be mafresh truma, whatever the shlich is, I send you on a shlich is to go somewhere where I am not there, and therefore you could do it. He says the concept of shlich is when it comes to a mitzvah is difficult to understand. Why? Meloi chalar Hashem is everywhere. Les asar ponemine. There's no place devoid of him. So then like he sends you on a shlich is to a place where he's not there, and whatever you accomplish is with his help. You can't move your finger without him. So the concept of shliach mitzvah, he says, is a strange lashon. You are shliach of a mitzvah. It's like Hashem sends you to go somewhere where he himself is not, so you can do the shlichas. So the expression, the expression is of some modern expression. So the Kotzke Rebbe explained it uh, homiletically. And he said the Gemara means something else. There's a famous Maimon Chazal, the Medrash says, the Rebbein Shalom says, Pischuli kechudoy shal machat. Which means, Shem says, open up for me an opening, the hole, the size of Chudoy Shalmachat. Chudoy Shalmachat is the, the eye of the needle, which is a tiny, how large, tiny, tiny, it makes a little hole. Open up for me a crevice, an opening, Chudoy Shalmachat. That's all I'm asking. And I will open for you an opening as large as the doors of the ulam, which was a section of the base. Somebody actually had no doors. <laughs> so it was just open completely. So it was a huge opening. So you open up a little tiny door for me. When the Ephraim was Cheshalullah. From the Baruch Mezherbush, it says, Matoivu Ayelecha Yaakov Mishkanesecha Yisrael. Bilam said, the tents of Yaakov are beautiful. So Rashi says, why? She'ein pischeyen mechuvon in negedzeh. Zeh negedzeh. Their doors were not parallel to each other. I didn't see what's happening in your tent. When I looked out of my tent, right, even out of my door, the doors weren't parallel, so people weren't looking in. There was privacy, modesty, tzniyas. Rebbe Baruch Hu Mezhebush said, the Rebbe de Baruch Hu, he said, Ein pischeyen, the doors of the Jew and God don't parallel each other. We only have to open up chudr shalmachat, the eye of a needle. And he opens up kepischei shalulam. It doesn't have to match each other. What I open up is not what he opens up. I open up a little, little hole, and he opens up kepischei shalulam. So he says, so what's a person's job in the world? A person's job in the world is pischei kechudr shalmachat. To be able to open up an opening in his heart, and his soul, kechudr shalmachat. To make, to make a dent, to perforate, to perforate his, his ego, his his insecurities, his fears, his to be able to pierce it, to pierce it a little bit. And that's and that's something he does, and he does it in this world as a shliach mitzvah. Zakhtar Bashi, I'm afraid, Shema Toivad Loy Machat. I'm afraid he's gonna lose the needle. Lose the needle means that needle that he has to take in order to. To create a chudoy shalmachat, in order to create that little pesach, you need a needle. Yeah. And the point of a needle is explained also. A needle has two sides. One side perforates. The other side has a hole through which you you bring through the string because you want to ultimately sew. Yeah. In life, you have to have both. You have to have the ability to be able to penetrate the hole, a certain strength. Ultimately, though, you want to bring through the string, you want to connect, you want to create integration. So I'm afraid that the person, his needle is going to be lost. And therefore, what's going to happen? <laughs> the shliach mitzvah, he says. The nekud of a shliach mitzvah. What's the shliach mitzvah? What his mission in this world to be pus, he forfeits. And he loses that opportunity to be the shliach mitzvah. That's the word. It's not Shema Yoved Machat, he lost a physical needle, he lost a diamond. 
The Nekudi is in the middle of Bdikas Chametz, ah? He lost the capability of, of doing the uh, Mitzvah. He lost, yeah, he lost that capability, that ability, that consciousness, the Chudah Shomachat, that opens up for him the Pischa Shalula. That's the afraid, that's the fear. So the Gemara says, what's the problem? He's doing it together with the Bdikas Chametz. Huh? May get pricked by the needle to <laughs> Maybe it's after the Bdikas Chametz. He loses. That's how he touches. Okay. Continue tomorrow. Be'ez Russia. Try to finish tomorrow till the Mishnah. Lee Nader. Mishnah, they want to catch it. Lai will get. Now I come to Arnold. It says to go and get small fish and big fish. In the story. How do they store it? Oh, the storage of the fish. I understood that it was dead. Because he says, Bay dug him. I didn't understand that the fish were alive. You mean it was a pond? A pond, you say. Well, in the supermarket, if any is. They go get the fish alive. It seems to me that he means a storage place. Huh? In the middle of the meal. He's saying in the middle of the meal, they went to get living fish. So if they were serving big fish, then you're not going to go get more. But if you're serving little fish, then you may go to the pond and bring out small fish. I don't know if that's what it means, because usually I would assume in the same pond you have both. No, big and small. So that's why I understood the Gemara meaning a storage place where you have a section for bigger fish and a section for small fish. How would they store fish? You're asking a good question. Search your pond on your property? So then the sure can has to be indoors. And it has to be indoors because we're talking about Dikas Chametz. You're not going to search a pond, right? You're going to search a room where you bring in Chametz. So it has to be indoors where there's no fish. I mean, usually you didn't have a pond indoors. So I see it more as a place how they stored the fish, I mean, that it didn't rot. Why is it relevant? But maybe it was a colder cellar. Yeah, they pickled it, they pickled it. They pickled it. Maybe they pickled it, they salted it. it. They had preservatives even then. Why even if they didn't have refrigeration. Huh? Why is it relevant to this law? No, no, he's asking when the Gemara speaks about a storage place for fish, it's talking about a pond or it's talking about like a closet. L'chayr, we're talking about a place where you don't have to be baidik, so it's a room where there may be chametz. And it says the shamish goes in and may put his bread there. So the pond, why would he put his bread in the pond? Even if he does, the fish eat it up. Right? And the fish would eat it up. We're talking about l'chayr, just like we talk about wine and oil. He goes in. He left it on the side. He left it on the side. We're outdoors. If it's outdoors, then the birds eat it up. We said before. You're saying a fish tank. Okay. You're saying an indoor fish tank. Maybe. I'm assuming it's a shiklach, a herring. So you're saying he takes a, huh? Herring, even a tub. Herring in a tub. Yes, pickled herring. They pickle the herring. And they put it They put it in a barrel. And that room where the herring is, or the other fish is, that's where he went in. I think with pastas, that's what it leads. I don't think it means dafke a pond with it. Okay. For liners the machat, shema toivet loy machat. For liners the machat, pischulik and chodesh al machat. Shliach mitzvah hat the machat. There are some people who don't need fish on Pesach. I'll that's a different huh? There's some people who don't eat fish. No, we're not talking about if you eat fish on Pesach or not. No, no, we're not. We're talking about if you have to be by the chametz before Pesach in a room where you store the fish. It's related to fish. is not chametz. Why wouldn't you eat fish on Pesach? I don't think because no, I was fish told they had a hundred ones that they ate. That's why. They ate fish. I was told. Why? Why? They were dumped. All the garbage into the river. Ah. In Europe, they were like they gave. No. Oh. Ah, oh, that's what you mean. In Vishnitz, yeah. No, it's after the fish. So they eat oats, they eat corn. There's so many things. They eat, uh, we also eat chametz. Maybe we shouldn't. Uh, maybe we shouldn't uh, exist on Pesach. I don't know, but I know they this class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.